825 here on a Thursday. Very excited to have you here. I'm happy to be here. You are so perpetually happy. I've seen you cook. <laughs> I've seen interviews with you. I've been a fan forever, as so many watching right now can say the same. Uh, we do want to start with the, the passing, the sad note. I know, and the rest, and, and the rest. Yes. We were so close. He was such a wonderful man. And, and a little known fact to the audience, he had the best sense of humor. He kept us laughing much more than Jim Backus. Really? Yeah, yeah. He really... He, he looks so dry and kind of serious, but there's a little twinkle behind his eyes. So handsome, though. A bunch I'll of the say, girls were like, I'll I say. love the professor. Me, too. I'm not so sure if we'd both been single, we wouldn't have hooked up. <laughs> there, oh. There you go. You got that. Start the rumors here. Was it like a family behind the scenes? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think you can work 14, 15 hours a day, really at close quarters and stuff like that. If there is an animosity or something, it really is awful. It would be horrible. So, no. I mean, we weren't, we didn't hang out together on the weekends. No. Well, Alan would come stop by the skipper would come by because he played golf not far from me and we'd share recipes but we didn't really you know Bob Denver had so many children he was always taking like the Pied Piper taking the kids to the mall 10 or 12 kids at a time Wow and then Natalie Schaefer and I <clears throat> excuse me became very close she didn't have a daughter so after the show was over we would go shopping and stuff she was 91 when she died and she swam naked in her pool every day <laughs> go girl <laughs> yes Wow and we should say long life which is which is wonder wonderful to celebrate uh, you look young, and it doesn't look possible that you're celebrating the 50th anniversary well, of this show. When I started. Well, you were six. Exactly. Yeah. You can dress me up as a grown-up and let me play that part. You do, but you're vivacious, and you're you're doing things like coming to the boat show and and hearing that famous theme song and and speaking about it with such passion. Do you ever get tired of being Marianne? Oh, sometimes, yeah. yeah. Well, I, yeah, sometimes, but it was such a blessing in my life, and it's uh, given me the opportunity to do so many other things. I did the Children's Miracle Network telethon in Missouri for 15 years. I was pre-med when I went to school, so I was wow. able to get now to get into the hospitals and, and, and walk around with a pediatric surgeon and watch surgery. So because I was Marianne, I was able to do that. So it sort of covers all the words. That was my favorite episode, when you thought you were ginger. When this you was mine. Your, was I it got, yours, too? No, this one. Oh, this dressed, one. Dressed in, the, dressed in the tiger outfit where I got to be kind of a sex symbol instead of just the girl next door. Well, let's talk about that a little bit because here you are wearing short shorts and a bare oh. midriff. And the, I mean, it's black and white television. It was years after that that Mary Tyler Moore was, you know, breaking down, quote unquote, the barriers. You were breaking down barriers. Well, I, I don't think they thought of it as that. They just, no. the, the censors just had to be very careful about my navel and Ginger's cleavage. But there was, no, well, there was very little kissing. If anybody True. kissed anybody, it knocked somebody out or they fell over. Or something. No sexual innuendo. Into at all. I mean, look what the television has done now. Yeah, it's a totally a different totally world. Totally different. And I think that's why this has sustained so long. And it stands up today. Like, this oh, yes, is this is something that stands up today. Did I hear rumor that there might be a movie? Oh, yes. Warner Brothers is optioned. Will you uh, be in it? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. Oh, come I on. Have... you got to make a cameo. Well, I have, I have my fantasy. I think you should be walking through the jungle, and you should see this tattered piece of gingham by the opening of a cave, all rotted, and then you go inside the cave, and Marianne has no teeth and her hair sticking out like this, and she's eating coconuts. <laughs> Talk to me about it, but I think it'd be a wonderful little bit. I think it would work. <laughs> is there one little known fact about Gilligan's Island that you can share with us? Is there one like you'd be surprised to know that? I don't think so. It's a tough one. Well, because everybody knows everything about everybody at every moment, whether it's true or not, so I don't know. This we didn't true. have all that stuff no. with the gossip magazines and everything back then. And thank goodness. What were the sets like? Oh, beautiful. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the huts were indoors. They, the grass huts were indoors, and they had palm trees with buckets with orchids flying out of them because they were all portable. And then they built a huge lagoon. This is my favorite story because I'm a theater major, University yes. of Washington, actually. University of Washington. Yes, theater school, absolutely. Oh, uh, but you can change a living room into a dining room into, you know, you can change the rooms. A square room is a square room. CBS built us a big lagoon because we couldn't shoot at the beach. It was too foggy. And we'd have the palm trees and pots and, and the orchids and everything. And then we'd shoot there like, say, on a Tuesday. On Thursday, guns smoke would come in. All the palm trees would go, pine trees would come in, tumbleweed would come in. No way. You change the landscape. Not a room, but the landscape. That always fascinated Who's, me. Who did you idolize in movies and television uh, coming up, growing up, and, and sort of moving uh, in those studios? I, did, I didn't uh, 
have any interest, particularly, no. no. I was kind of pre-med, and I, I started theater because my knees dislocated. I wanted to be a ballerina, and oh. I couldn't take any sports. I've never been to play, played a sport at all. So I, at Stevens College, which is where I went to first as a women's college, my professor said, why don't you take a theater course? So I took a theater course, and he said, oh, you're good at this. I went, Pff. you ought to major in it. I went, be an out-of-work actor, are you kidding? So I picked the University of Washington because I had a great theater school and a great med department. John Wells is <laughs> unbelievable in person. I can attest to this. My name is Jody Benson. I love her. Uh, go to BC Place this evening yes. from 4 to 7. 4 to 7. Come out and see the SS Minnow that's been restored and all these fabulous boats. I was there yesterday. It's a great experience. Come on out and see me. Come and see the SS Minnow. Those are words that you cannot deny. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so glad to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you, you Jody. I'm going to the boat show now.